Hi, my name's Thomas McEvely. It's March 25th, 2009. And with the help of my friend Michael Casino, I'm going to read some material from my recent book on the ancient Greek poet Sappho. Here's the book. It's simply called Sappho by Thomas McEvely, and it's published by Spring Publications in 2008, and you can get it easily over the internet or probably in some other places. For the about eight pages of the significant principal fragments of Sappho's work, I've provided about 450 pages of discussion, contextualization, and analysis, both the, what you might call the literary criticism and the philology of sapphic studies are covered here. I'm going to read six of the eight principal texts that have survived from Sappho's oeuvre. Texts 1, 2, 16, 31, 94, and 96. For each, I will read first my English translation, and then Sappho's Greek, in which I will somewhat stress the rhythm of the eolic meters. The reason I will read the English translation before the Greek is not because I think it's more important, but because I think that some listeners who have not studied Greek will be able to follow some of the Greek since they have just heard a translation of it. Both the English translations and the Greek text are as they appear in my recent book on Seth. Some of the lines or stanzas are so fragmentary due to holes in the papyri that I've skipped them. There are a few other cases when I have kind of kept the rhythm of the meter until we get back to a whole text. And uh, there are a couple of places where I have chosen scholarly restorations of a line. One, splendor throned immortal Aphrodite, child of Zeus, while weaving, I beseech you, do not overwhelm with troubles and with sorrows, mistress my heart. But hither come, if ever at other time, hearing my voice from afar, you heeded, and leaving your father's house of gold, you came, yoking your chariot, and fair swift sparrows drew you around the dark earth, fluttering fast their wings from heaven to mid-sky, and quickly were here. And you, O oh blessed one, smiling with your immortal countenance, asked what now I had suffered, and for what now I called you, and what most of all I longed for in my mad heart. Whom now shall I persuade to come to your love? Who, O oh Sappho, is hurting you? For if now she flees, soon she will follow, and if she does not accept gifts, she will give them, and if she does not love, quickly she will love, even unwilling. Come to me now, too, and free me from harsh anxiety, and whatever my heart longs to have fulfilled for me, fulfill it, and be yourself my ally. Poiki lo thron athanatophrodita, Pai dios do lo plocalisso mai se, me masai si made oni aisi damna potne o thumon. Ola tweed elf ai potacata rota, tas e mas audas ai oisa peloi, eclues patras de doman li poisa, cruci on e hilthes, arm hu pas de uxaisa, coloi de sagan oke estruthoi perigas melainas, pugna dinen tes perap oran o theros de ameso. Ipsa dexi conto, sud o macaira, medi aisai sath on a to prosopo, ere hot 
koti deo te peponta, koti deo te kalemi, koti moe malista thelo genes thai maino lai thumo, tina deo te petho, apsa genes son filotata tis so psafadike. I gar I fail gay to say hoist the oak say I de dora me deck it all a do say I de me file take us file say cook at the loisa El the moi kai nun kelapon de lusan ek marim nan osa de moi telesai thu mas he mere telesan sudauta sumakas eso. Sixteen. Some say a host of cavalry, others of infantry, others of ships, is the most beautiful thing on the dark earth, but I say it is whatever one loves. And it is very easy to make this understood by everyone, for she who far surpassed all mankind in beauty, Helen, leaving her husband, that noble man, and sailing away, went to Troy, and she did not care at all for her child or her parents, but Eros led her astray. Which now reminds me of Anactoria, who is not here, whose lovely walk and shining brightness of face I would rather see than the chariots of Lydia and foot soldiers with all their armor. 16. The Greek Oi men hippe on strotan oi de pesdom, oi de naon phais epigon melainon, em en ai kaliston ego de kenototis eratai. Panku deo maresunetan pois, ai panti tuta garpolo perskethoisa, kalas anthropon helenaton andra ton paneriston, kali pois sebas troi an pleoisa, kude paidas ude filon tokeon, pam pan emnas thala paraga gautan, bum ba ba bum bum. Tos ke bo loi man ere tante bama, kama ruk ma lampran idein prosopo, eta ludon armata kai aploisi pesdoma kentas. 31. That man seems to me to be like the gods, who sits opposite you and hears you near him speaking sweetly and laughing attractively. But it shakes the heart in my breast, for as soon as I look at you, I can no longer speak. My tongue is broken to silence, and already a subtle fire has run under my skin. In my eyes is no vision, my ears are humming, a cold sweat pours down me, and trembling seizes all my body. I am paler than grass, and seem to be almost dying. 31. The Greek Fine et I moi cana si saste oisin em eno huner autis en antias tois dane cae plasi an adu phone sas hupacue. Cae gelae sas hi meroento me man carde an en stethes en epto aisin, oscares si dobroke os me phone ai suden et eke. O la can men glosa e age lepton, dauti cacro pur hupo dedro meken, o patesi duden orem epirum besi da curae, ecade midros psu cross cacce et aetrum aste, pais an agre chloro terra de poias, em is tathna cain doligo pideves, finum em autae. Two. Come for my sake from Crete to this holy temple, where is your lovely grove of apple trees, and altars are smoking with frankincense. Therein cold water sings through the apple branches, and all the place is shadowed over with roses, and from quivering leaves a magic sleep flows down. Therein a meadow with pasture for horses blooms with flowers and sweet breezes breathe. 
There, taking the garlands cypress into golden cups luxuriously, let the nectar mixed with good cheer be poured like wine for these my friends and yours. Fragment 94. Never again will I see Atthis. Really, I want to die. Weeping, she left me. She said many things in this. Alas, what terrible things we have gone through. Sappho, truly I leave you against my will. And I made her these replies. Farewell, go and remember me, for you know how we cared for you. But if you do not, I wish to remind you what tender and beautiful things we went through. For many wreaths of violets and of woven roses, too, you put around yourself at my side, and many woven necklaces of flowers cast about your soft neck, and with much rich and royal perfume elegantly you anointed. And upon a soft bed you satisfied desire of tender young girls, and there was no sacred hill, nor temple, nor stream of water whence we were absent, no grove, the rattle of castanets. 94. With Edmonds's version of line 1. The text in this case is a bit more fragmentary and disjunct than in other cases. At thid u potar opsomai, Teth na kein dada los thelo, a me psis domena kata limpanen. Pola kai tore e pemoi, o im hus dena pepon tamen, psap e mansa e koisa u limpano. Tan de go tare me boman, kai rois erke o kama thin, mem nice oyster gar hosse pede bomen. I dem mal as a go thelo, om nai sai bum bum o sa mal tha ka kai kale pas gomen. Po lois gar stefanoi si on kai brod don ploki oin timoi, kai po lai supothu me das plek tais amphapolai derai, on thon ebales pepo e menais. Kai polo liparos moro brente o bababum babum, exalepse o kai basile eo, kai strom nan epimolta can, exies pothan ea needon, cu tetis lofas u teti, iron u to the tas wherewa, eplet hopothen ames epas apes gomen. Ninety six. Sard, polaki tweed and non a coisa, seth the icicalan a rig no tai side maliste kairemol pai, nun de ludai sin em prepetai gunai kessin hospota eleo dunta sabro dudactalos Panta perec cois astrofa oste pis ke thalos an epal moran isos kai polu ante mois aru rais. A de ersa kalak ekutai thethal laisi de broda kapal an thruska kai melilotas ante modes. Pola dead sap foi tais agonas epimnas theis atidas imero leptan poifrena care asai boritai. Fragmentary ending. Sappho was a woman of a seemingly well to do family on the island of Lesbos in the sixth century. BC. She wrote a very famous corpus of poetry, quite little of which has survived, and most of which has survived only in fragments. And there are two reasons for this. First of all, because uh, of the time, most of the texts of Sappho's works were probably on papyrus, a medium which has only survived in the dry, hot climate of Egypt. Through the rest of the Mediterranean, Sappho's poems seem to have been lost 
to their age. As a result of the combination of the ravages of time and climate, and on the other hand, the ravages of Christian censorship, most of Sappho's work has been lost. They were written down and they were valued, and there was a book trade in the ancient Mediterranean in the 6th century BC, and even though the exact details of its working and of the survival of Sappho's oeuvre are not very well known at all, still the fact is that she, it seems that she was an extremely famous poet in her own day and that her poems were highly valued throughout Greco-Roman antiquity, that is, for about a thousand years. By the end of the 1960s, a new generation of scholars had arisen who were no longer inclined to attempt to argue away Sappho's homosexuality, but who were freely accepting of it. And since that time, we have had a very much more open and honest scholarly approach to her, to her works. These issues and the various generations of scholars and the ideological approaches with which they came to Sappho's work are all matters which are discussed in my book. Here's the book. It's simply called Sappho by Thomas McEvoy, and it's published by Spring Publications in 2008. And you can get it easily over the internet or probably in some other places.